This video, I'm going to explain to you why most engineering students do not graduate. In fact, many of them don't even make it past freshman year. And out of the ones that make it past freshman year, a good amount still don't graduate. And I'm going to give you eight reasons for why that happens such that you can quickly figure out if one of the reasons has a high likelihood for you to drop out or not stick to engineering. But towards the end, I'm going to give you some good reasons on why you should stop and when to know whether it's a good idea or not. If you're here for the first time, my name is Ali El Karagouli. I am a systems engineer and a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. And when I was a freshman after my fall semester, I was strongly on the verge of dropping out and switching back and going to a community college or doing something else uh, because I was absolutely destroyed in my very first semester. And when I say destroyed, I don't necessarily mean in terms of grades. I still had a good GPA, but I was just destroyed like mentally and emotionally. And that brings us to the first reason why most people don't graduate. It's what I call the mindset, skill set, environment convolution. So picture there are three variables that you kind of have to get right. It's actually only two variables. It's the mindset and the skill set. The environment can play a huge role. For example, if you have good professors, you have good friends that you can hang out with, you're in an environment that is not toxic. That does help, but the challenge with engineering school is there are two things you have to get right. You have to get the skill set and the mindset right. And by skill set, I don't necessarily mean being good at math or being good at physics. Obviously, these things are very, very important, but the more important skill is to be able to learn things, period. Because when I went into college from high school, I was not very well prepared in math and physics and I was absolutely destroyed, but I had the skill of being able to learn something very quickly, coupled with the mindset of like, okay, I'm gonna figure it out and that's okay. And that helped me get through. And this was the crazy part is that I would notice in freshman year, a lot of people who were much smarter than me, a lot more skilled, a lot more, a lot better at math, a lot better at physics, people who were taking things apart since they were little kids. And I would be intimidated, but the problem is these people had the skill set, but they did not have the mindset. Like they would take one punch after one exam and then they just couldn't do it anymore. And a lot of them switched out of engineering. And to me, that was just crazy. Now, on the other hand, I knew people who had like very strong mindset, very strong ability to kind of sit down, do the work, push through it. But I felt like they were going through an uphill battle. I could sense that they were not even interested in the material at all. So yes, you could have the mindset of like, okay, I'm gonna go in and learn things and whatnot and fail and get back up. But if you're not even interested in the, in the skills and you're, you don't really have the skills, then it's gonna be really, really tough. Which brings me to the second reason why a lot of people don't graduate is a lot of them don't actually have any interest in engineering. And this is very important for you to figure out to see, well, am I actually interested in this thing? Is this some, is something I'm curious about? And can I develop a curiosity or an interest in it? Because a lot of people join in because they're like, oh, this is a good salary and this is something I can do while I can do something else. But good luck getting through four or five years of brutal engineering classes with that mindset. You simply cannot because it's going to be very, very difficult. The math classes are going to be difficult. The physics is going to be difficult. The workload is going to be insane, which brings me to the third reason, which is time management. In engineering, you're taking more classes than anyone else, than any other major. The classes are actually harder. So, so you're actually screwed in two ways. You have a larger workload and the classes are harder. So you need to manage your time really, really well. And that's something I had to be very, very good at. I'd say probably my number one skill in undergrad was being able to manage my time properly properly and quickly make trade-off decisions. For example, should I go to this lecture or no, should I sit down and work on this project? Should I do this assignment or should I study for this exam? And sometimes it would be literally like, uh, attendance would be like five or 10%. I would have to make a strategic decision of, am I gonna take the L on this 5% in hopes of getting like a, a 30, 40% likelihood increase in another subject? You, got, you have to kind of make decisions like that. You have to do a lot of trade-off decisions like that. Now, on top of that, I had a part-time job while I was working and I was selling cars at the time. This is something I did in college is I would buy a car and I would like fix it up or, or add some touches to it and I would flip it for more money. Basically, that's how I would make money on the side. And in the previous summer, I had worked at a car dealership and I had worked at a car repair shop and I would fix cars and whatnot. But during the school year, obviously I could not do that. So I would still also have to manage my time between like making the car listings and talking to people and meeting with people and whatnot and having people schedule test drives and things like that and that still felt like it was a lot and, and sometimes i get a lot of comments on this channel that are like oh my god this guy um like oh you, you, you can't manage your time if you have a part-time job i had a part-time job you just i mean i think the only thing that can be really really difficult is if you have like either a full-time job which at that point i think that's impossible doing a full-time job with a full-time engineering workload or you have a family and, and and that being very demanding like having wife or kids or whatnot then you really need ultra hardcore time management skills but that brings me to the fourth reason which is the financial pressure and i actually have a very controversial view on this i have a very strong opinion on this so i had to take out student loans to pay for my engineering education my i went to university of buffalo which was in the northeast it was a state school so thankfully it wasn't that expensive. It was around $20,000 per year. And I had to take out loans at like 18 years old. I had to sign something that says, okay, I got to pay this 20,000 back and then 
40,000. And then thankfully by my junior year, I had some type of scholarship, so that eased it up a little bit. But still, there's a lot of financial pressure and a lot of people don't graduate because they don't want to keep accumulating more and more debt if they don't see that there's gonna be a benefit. However, here's where I have a controversial opinion on this. In my opinion, taking out student loans for me was good because whenever I would think about quitting or whenever I would think about, oh man, I gotta stop doing this and go do something else, I would remind myself, I paid like $20,000, $40,000 for this, $50,000 by the end. And I'm like, okay, well, now I got to make it work. I got to at least finish it so I can have it as a backup. And then based on that, I can see what happens. And that was so useful because it can be sometimes so tempting to like emotionally quit. Like there's rational quit and there's emotional quit. But most of the time people emotional quit because it's something that's very difficult. Again, you get punched in the face by all these classes and you just kind of can't get through it. And the very first thing your survival brain is trying to tell you is, oh, dude, maybe this is not for me. Maybe it's for other people. Maybe I should go do something else. But then I would go and check my balance for my loans. And I'd say, okay, no, that's not an option. I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to have to figure something out. So I don't know. I, I feel like this is very personality dependent. But something that has really served me in my life is like burn the ships attitude. I kind of just, I don't know, sign up for something. And I don't know, screw myself over and get myself. And in, in, I, I corner myself until I can really fight my way out of it. Probably not a very healthy way to live life, but it definitely helped me get through that stage. So if that's what you gotta do, then that's what you gotta do. Which brings me to the fifth reason why some people don't graduate. And this reason is perfectly okay, which can be like health issues or family issues or any type of external events. Like I did have people who had like genuine health uh, issues. I had some friends who like would either have like strong me mental health problems or even physical health problems. And, and, and that would just prevent them from continuing. And I think that would be the most unfortunate situation is if you want to keep going, but then something external stops you from happening. And again, sometimes in life, you can't really control that, but the best you can is just to do whatever you can to increase likelihood of improving that. So having preventive measure for, for your physical health, trying to eat as clean as possible, trying to work out, doing all these things. And then for your mental health, try to be surrounded by people. I think mental health is something that is not really discussed much in engineering school. A lot of engineering students are like, very mentally like in trouble again because very very high stress and i think the single differentiator between the people who survive that and don't survive that is whether you have friends and family around or whether you have some type of support system around i was very grateful in that i had many friends in undergrad i had many friends back home when i would go visit home i had my parents that i would call i had my siblings that i could call and basically even though i was like in panic mode every other day i had uh, enough people around me to kind of not think about that too much however later on when i was in grad school and i was like in a bit more isolated situation i could definitely notice how sometimes having a lot of stress with not a lot of support or people around can be very very difficult so my advice there is simple try to involve as much people in your life as possible now the sixth reason people don't stick through and after that i'm going to transition to having two good reasons the last one is simply unpreparedness. And again, this goes back to the mindset, skill set, convolution. You could be unprepared in terms of mindset, unprepared in terms of skill set. So if I was someone who's in high school or who's in freshman year or whatnot and want and I want to keep going, I would really def refine both my mindset and my skill set. You refine your skill set by working on things, solving problems, doing projects, doing things of that nature. You refine your mindset simply by doing hard things and overcoming hard things and having small wins and focusing on the small wins. And you can think of this analogy with running a marathon. If you're going to run 26.2 miles and you have never worked out in your life, you've never done any of that, it's going to be really, really hard. However, if you can go on occasional jogs, you can go on runs, you can start eating clean, you're going to prepare yourself a lot better. So if you're someone who's about to go into engineering school or trying to advance to engineering school, I would strongly recommend watch a lot of videos on engineering, try to read about it, try to work on a project, even if it's something that's very, very simple, and that should be quite good. Now, the seventh reason why someone may fail or may not continue the degree or fail to finish the degree uh, is that they find an external opportunity that simply suits them better. So this goes back to the idea of this thing may not be for you and it's okay. So I've had people who would um, leave engineering school to go work and do something else. They may get a job in doing something else that is outside of engineering, or maybe it could even be within engineering that doesn't require you to do to have it your degree. I remember having a friend who dropped out midway through the degree and got a job in programming that did not require the degree because he was a skilled enough programmer. And he was like, F this, I'm not gonna finish this degree. And that's totally okay for a position to be in, but obviously the catch there is you have to be so good and skilled at what you do that you are willing to take that risk. Because at the end of the day, the degree is still some kind of insurance to, sh to show that you have done something, you have finished something. Now, if you haven't finished that, you better have a compelling reason to do it, such as finding a job or doing something that does not require it. Or, which brings us to reason number eight, the real reason I think one should absolutely drop out is if you have, um, if you want to start your own business, if you have like a burning idea and you have the right resources for it and you just have a crazy sense of urgency. And this is something that I did not understand until later. For example, when I would hear stories about people like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg or people who are like, I don't know, sophomores in Harvard, juniors in Harvard, 
and they would drop out to go build a company or do a startup. I would think, man, these people are crazy. Like you could have just stuck it out for one more year. But then later I started realizing that once you have like an idea that it's something that you're burning with that you that you genuinely think is going to is going to have a high chance of success or it's something that you just cannot stop thinking about, then the degree kind of becomes a hurdle in your way. And these people would simply drop out to focus on whatever it is that they got building. Because let's say you're trying to build an app that you genuinely think will either connect people together or I was going to write new software for computers. That takes time and that takes effort. But now you have to show up to classes and you have to do lab assignments and you have to do things of that nature. Obviously, you're going to probably half-ass these things and you're going to fail anyway. You're not going to do very well in them. Now, what a lot of universities or programs would do is they would have instead of drop out pro uh, like a decision, they would have like a stop out of college idea i think this is especially popular in the bay area where you could stop out of college temporarily to go pursue building something and then come back if needed and then if the thing takes off then you don't really have to stick around and finish the degree and if it doesn't then well oh well you come back and nothing happens so if you're someone who has an idea that you want to pursue that you think college is kind of getting in the way and you genuinely think it has an impact you've done your research on the market and you genuinely think your classes are getting in the way of you growing that thing then i would strongly encourage that you would talk to your school about not necessarily dropping out but stopping out and saying hey can i take a year long break or something like that pursue this thing and then potentially come back and then that way you protect yourself in both cases so anyway as you can see there's a lot of reasons why someone may drop out or may not finish or may switch something else some of it could be health some of it could be mindset some of it could be skill set some of it could be external opportunities what you want to do is you want to always be sure that you know exactly which one it is that is impacting you and if you were to ever realize that you don't want to finish your engineering program make sure that it is a logical decision and not an emotional one and i made another video discussing this topic should show up somewhere over here so you should go ahead and watch that i'll see you in the next one peace love